So Tim, how do I know if my wireless mics or IEMs are going to be affected by this Spectrum auction? Let's check it out. Now, one of the myths about this problem is that only 600 megahertz wireless mics and IEMs are going to be affected. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So we're going to talk about a couple of things in this video. How to find out what your wireless gear frequencies are. Then we're going to talk about where TV channels are moving in your area, what channels are going to be available, and when TV channels are going to move. Let's start out with the basics. TV channels 38 through 51, 614 to 698 megahertz, have been sold. Now you may be able to continue using your wireless mics or IEMs until July 2020. So how do I know what frequencies my wireless mics or IEMs are operating in? Well, there's good news. Most of the time it's printed on the back of your gear. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here are a couple of Audio Technica mic receivers. Let's zoom in on the back. So you can see the first one, the frequencies are 655 to 680 megahertz. So if you're doing a survey of your wireless gear, get a notepad out and write down the frequency range of each piece of gear as you go along. Let's look at the next one. Here's the second one. Now it looks like this is going to be operating in 541 to 566 megahertz. So let's write that down. Okay, here we have some Sennheiser mics. And it looks like both are running in the 629 to 662 megahertz range. Now let's take a second and talk about range. Range just indicates the area of frequencies where your wireless mics can operate. It doesn't necessarily mean that your mics are using all of that spectrum but it does mean that they can be tuned to different parts of that spectrum. Some older wireless gear, you will notice, has a fixed frequency, so it can't be retuned. But a lot of newer wireless gear can be retuned within the range that it's indicated on the back. Here's another example. Um, I have here an Audio-Technica uh, Freeway 600 series. And uh, so that guy... Um, unfortunately, if we look around on it, it doesn't tell you anything about the frequency uh, range that's listed. But it does give a frequency band on the front. So uh, I'll see if we can get my camera to focus here. And we can see it's frequency band A. That's about as much information as we have about it. So let's see what we can find online. So I'll type in Audio Technica. Freeway 600 series band A frequencies, and I'll do a search. So my first result is a PDF, which seems to be an owner's manual, so I'll click on that. Okay, now I've found an owner's manual. If I scroll down, I have system operating frequencies, and it looks like they have a band A and a band B listed with the TV channels they operate in. And if I scroll down again, I have frequencies listed for band A, which as you recall is the band our mic is in. Now notice the first frequency is 470 megahertz, and the last frequency is 479.750 megahertz. So that's my range that this wireless mic operates in. Now that you've made a list of the frequencies for your wireless mics and your wireless IEMs, let's talk about spectrum repack or channel repack. The first thing to know is that some non-600 megahertz wireless mics can be affected by this channel repack. That's because channels currently in the 600 megahertz wireless range are going to have to move to new locations in the 400 to 500 megahertz range. And potentially they could move into open channels that your wireless mics are using right now. So these TV channels relocating is called a repack, or that's what the FCC wants to call it. So how can I find out which channels are moving in my area and where they're moving? Well, grab a notepad and a pen and open a second tab on your browser and we'll walk through how to do that. Let's go to www.antennaweb.org. 
click on the click here to start button and you'll want to put in your exact address for your facility. I'll just put in Dayton, Ohio. So now you have a list of TV channels available in your area. We have WPTD and notice there is an I in the FCC repack column. So let's click on it. Let's look at the information here. Phase six, that's when the channels are moving and the phase completion date is 10, 18, 2019. So that's when the channels will be finished moving. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Then you'll notice channel changing and we know this channel is going to move. So that's important. And going off the air, no. So this channel is not going away. Some channels are going away entirely, but this one is not. Five is the current RF channel. So let's take a minute and talk about this. It's important to look at the RF channel because the RF channel isn't particularly the branded name of the channel. Let's take a look here at Fox 45, for example. So here's Fox 45, but it's on channel 30. It got moved in 2012 from channel 45 to channel 30, but they didn't make them rebrand. <laughs> Confusing, right? So we want to know what is the RF channel? That's the important part. That indicates an actual radio frequency range where that channel broadcasts. So you can't just look at your local channels and go, hey, it's channel 45 because it 45 it may not be 45 at all. So confusing, right? All right, look at the RF channel. Let's continue. The current RF channel is channel 16. And so they haven't moved around. They've been channel 16 for a while here, but look, it's moving to a new RF channel, channel 35. So let's make a list of each channel with a current RF channel and a new RF channel. And if the channel's not moving, then just put the current number over into the new column. In the new column, we want a list of all these channels and where they're gonna be after the spectrum auction ends. So just work your way down the list on Antenna Web there, write each one out. Now notice if there's not an I next to it, you can just write down the channel number because it's not moving anywhere. Now that we've made that first list, we're gonna make a second list. We need to take the channels from the new column and put them in numerical order. And now we need to assign frequencies to each channel. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna to go to www.wikipedia.org and type in North American Television Frequencies. You should get this page. And this is gonna give us the information we need to convert from an RF channel number to an actual frequency number. So we'll scroll down and find the UHF band. Our first channel was 22. So here's 22, let's enter the lower edge frequency, 518 megahertz, then put a dash and enter the upper edge frequency, 524 megahertz. And that's our range for channel 22, 518 to 524. So do this for each channel on your list until you have them all filled out. Okay, now that we have this list, we're gonna make a third list. Hang with me here. So using your channel list, Let's make a list of empty channels. Now, UHF channels start at channel 14. So you notice we have an empty spot here from 14 to 21. And then again, from 23 through 30, then 32 and 37. Well, we can't use 37. It's reserved for radio astronomy. And then anything below that has been sold off in the spectrum auction. Now, using your Wikipedia list, add frequency ranges to each one of these empty blocks. So now you have a list of open frequencies after spectrum repack, list number three. List number two is a list of frequencies where TV channels are moving. So if you have wireless gear that's currently operating in these frequency ranges outside the 600 megahertz, but in these frequency ranges where channels are moving, then you could have some interference issues with that wireless gear. If you have a lot of channels and you're gonna have some overlap from a move, you could have problems or maybe be able to use only a couple of your channels because potentially a TV station could be right, or a couple of TV stations, could be right in the middle of the range for your wireless gear and where it's operating. 
Now, if you only have a couple of channels and you have one TV station move in or two, you might be okay. But if you have several channels, all the same band on the same brand of gear, you could potentially have some interference issues when these television channels move into that area. So let's go back and take a look at phases. We started looking at that. So let's finish up. That'll give you an idea of when things will start happening in your area. If you go back to the list on Antenna Web and click on the info eye under the FCC repack, you can get to the bottom of that tab and click on the to learn more about Spectrum Auction, click here part. And then you'll see a list of phases by date. Or you can just come back and watch this video. That might be easier. So Dayton was phase six. So testing begins on 9-17-2019 and everything will be wrapped up by 10-18-2019. Now admittedly, this is not a perfect system. And the thing I don't want you to do is think that this could replace a spectrum scan or a proper frequency coordination by a professional. However, I think it's gonna give you a good heads up to see if anything is moving, if new channels may potentially interfere with the gear that you're running right now and help you plan for the future. So in that context, I hope this has been a helpful video. Thanks for watching.